Hi Callie! Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, and oracle card advisor. How are you today? So we're going to talk to your dad today. And we're going to see what Johnny's got to say. Oh, he's saying, singing, when Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah. He's so sweet. I love that picture you sent of him. So, anyway, I don't know if you know, but I see, hear, feel, sense, smell. You know, not so much smell. Anyway, no. So, and I'll get pictures. He'll show me pictures and stuff, and I have to try to describe it to you, like spiritual charades. Blah. Hate, hate the game charades. <laughs> so, uh, we'll see what he's got to say. He's um. He's still singing that song, or he's singing the he's singing the song. When Johnny comes marching home again, hoorah, hoorah! That's a really really old song. I don't know how old you are. I don't creep anybody's Facebook page ahead of time. It muddies my little my little brain. So he's so sweet. He's so sweet. Um. He's showing, he's showing himself with an oxygen, you know, the little oxygen thing in his nose. He looks very weak, very frail. Um, this is right before he passed. He's laying in what looks like a hospital type bed. And he's holding his left hand out to you. And he's turning his head towards you. They never they never waste a message. There's always a reason for whatever they show. I just need to figure out how to describe it to you well enough so you'll understand what he's getting at. And he's looking at you with so much love in his eyes. And he says, I could hear you. I had trouble saying what I wanted to say, but I could hear you. He says, it's important for you to know that I heard every word you said. And he's and he's making it he's making it feel like there was a whole bunch of a whole bunch of hubbub and a whole bunch of flurry and a whole bunch of like on the other side of the bed, like a whole bunch of people moving around and and jabbering and carrying and carrying on, but as far as the spot you were standing, you were crystal clear. It was calm. It was. You may not have felt this way, but this is the way that he saw. He totally concentrated on you. He didn't even know all this other crap was going on. It was like, it was like you were in a world of your own, the two of you. And you, he says you didn't even have to be there physically. I still felt your love. I could still hear what you were saying. And I still can hear what you say. Sorry, my bad habit. And he's taking, okay, let's see what he's showing me. He's taking your hand and he's putting your hand between both of his hands. He's putting your hand in there and he's stroking the top of your hand, trying to comfort you. He says, you will feel that now. You will feel, and it won't, it won't feel like 
a physical hand because it's not a physical hand. It won't feel like a physical, oh, he's making me itch. That's one, that's one of the ways that they feel, you feel their energy. Um, anyway, it won't feel like a physical hand, but it will feel more like maybe a little bit of pressure on both sides, but not pressure like, like me. Let's see if I can describe this. Um, it'll feel like air pressure, air pressure on both sides of your hand, but mostly on the top because that's, and since he's given me the itching, it's going to feel like, it could feel like bugs crawling I'm, when their energy, this is how they tell me, ah, I'm muttering, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like bugs crawling. Sometimes it feels like, you know, when the, you get a hair touching you, you know, and you try to get it off because it's tickling you. You may feel heat. It's the way that it depends on you and how the energy affect, their energy affects you and how strong they can do it. So he's still making me itch. So you're going to have some itching on the back of your hand, absolutely. But you should have some pressure or, or uh, warmth along with it. Big creep, now my lips itching. <laughs> um, he tries to do this a lot. You should be feeling this a lot. He said he's. saying something about there was a time recently before he passed when now I got the heebie-jeebies sorry I do not have head lice <laughs> it's what it feels like though there was a time recently before he passed that Let's see if he gets any more specific with it I don't need to know the details as long as you understand, as long as I get it to you clear enough for you to understand what he's trying to say. That somebody was bothering you or somebody was, somebody was being mean to you, somebody was, somebody was doing something to you. And he's not indicating, at least not yet, whether it's male or female, or what the situation was, and it's none of my business. But it was a situation where he felt like him as the dad should be stepping up and defending you and sticking up for you. And he says, even though I didn't do that, kicking some ass for you. And he was too tired. And he didn't have the energy to do it. And he felt really bad about it. He really, really it really bothered him. It bothered him that he couldn't handle the situation. And it's like he, it's like he wanted to get up and push this person back away from you and tell them to leave you alone. He says, I just didn't have the energy. And I wish I could have, and I wish I would have. So th this is something he really regrets. That you need to tell him that you forgive him for this that he couldn't help it, you know, he just, he just couldn't help it. He didn't do it on purpose. But it would kind of ease his energy if, if you know that he's sorry, that you know that he wanted to do this. And it would ease his energy if you tell him it's okay. He says you handled it, but whoever this person was, they kind of it kind of really beat you down like maybe mentally or, or energetically or something just kind of he wasn't happy about it he 
he's talking about Georgia. I don't know if he's mentioned. I don't know if he's mentioning the state. Something about Georgia. If it's a name, jeez, oh, he's not. Oh, I'm seeing the state. I don't even know where you live. I don't look. I don't look creep on anybody's Facebook page because it muddies muddies my poor little pea brain. <laughs> Um, he's talking about sharks sharks that swim in the water he wished he wishes that he had more to give you when he was here. He wishes he had more physical things to give you when he was here. He wishes he could have provided for you more. He wishes he could have done more for you. And I'm not sure, he just showed me a little quick picture of him outside pushing a lawnmower. At first, it was one of those old rotary ones, and then it was just a push mower. I don't know the significance of that. I hope you do. He's calling you his little... his little Cali bear something like that. I can't quite hear him. He's being real soft. He, um, when you go to sleep at night, I don't know if, it, if this is just as you're falling asleep or right after you've fallen asleep. He's singing some kind of a, of a lullaby to you. Really soft. You may not hear the words. You might hear humming. You might hear the tune. It's some lullaby that the both of you are familiar with. Something he's kind of saying to you your whole life from the time you were little that you've heard it off and on. He's singing. He's singing that to you. Now he's showing... showing a picture of when you were born, which you're not going to remember this, but he wants you to know this. When you were born and you were just this little tiny infant, he was holding you probably for the first time. And he's looking at you and feeling so much love that he never thought he could have. And wondering, what am I going to do with this, this little this little person. What am I going to do with this little person? And he hopes, he hopes that his love was enough. Even when he wasn't there, 
he hopes that you felt that you knew in your heart of hearts that that he loved you oh my goodness now the itching won't go away <laughs> sorry now he's he's pushing his chest out and he's puffing right up with pride he's so proud of you he says you're strong you're independent you're weak on the inside but you don't let that show He says you know how to stand up for yourself. And he's showing me a yellow butterfly. So, yellow, a yellow butterfly will be a sign from him to you and they won't all, I'm still itching, <coughs> excuse me. So they won't always be live butterflies. They'll be on Facebook, they'll be on the TV, they'll be on a bumper sticker, um, they'll, be, they'll be everywhere, yellow ones. And like when I used to go to the cemetery, it was always a white butterfly and it just, Anyway, that'll be one of your signs is yellow butterfly. Pictures, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter where they come from, where you see them. When you see these, say, I love you, Dad. I know that I know you're sending me a sign. Thank you. And acknowledge it, and then you'll get more. I love teaching people to see their signs because you're being sent signs all the time from your loved ones. We just don't realize it until somebody points it out and they go, Oh, wow. He's drawing my attention to my yellow tulip back there, too. That will be, that will be something else that you'll see. And he's still got me itching, itching. It's like head lines. It's, it, it, it seems like they usually affect my head. I do not have head lines. He says he doesn't know where you got your beauty from, on the, your beauty on the outside. He says it wasn't from me. He says you helped him. He's showing that you held a glass up with a straw in it and helped him drink. Do you have a picture of him in, in your car? A picture of him like maybe on the sun visor or something? There's a song that you sing to him too, even now. There's a song like, I feel like it comes on the radio and you sing it to him. I can almost hear it, but not quite. <coughs> now I mentioned horses and then he said mustangs I don't know if he's referring to the actual horse or a symbol or a nickname a mascot maybe
Okay, he says he says there's an aunt with him now, and her name started with a B, as in boy. I stink. I stink at names, so I've just gone to go, doing the first letter. That. Uh, His, his aunt, his aunt, so it would be one of his parents' sisters, I think, I believe, because he kind of pointed up to the side. He says she's still telling him what to do. She's still, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. He says, oh, the women in my family. <laughs> He's showing that he puts a finger in his ear and just tries to ignore him. <laughs> he goes back to how beautiful you are. Inside and out. And when he left, there was there was a father type figure waiting for him. There was this aunt. There was a very large, beautiful angel. He's trying to show me something else, somebody else. I can't tell who it is. It's, I've never seen this before. It's like he was showing me the father figure and the aunt and this beautiful angel over here. And then there was somebody else that I couldn't quite see it, but the middle of this turned into this big, it, I kept thinking something was gonna appear in front of me. It was just like a light and it grew and it got brighter and it grew and it grew and it grew and it got higher. Wow. There is no face or picture to this. He says he saw God himself. I've never, ever, ever heard of that before or seen anything like he's showing me. And he felt at peace. And he felt the love. And he said it's something he can't describe to you. He says, but I was blessed to be able to see this and know it. He sees a young man walking towards you. And he's making me feel like this is going to be somebody you're going to commit to. A very strong personal relationship, personal union between you and this guy. And he likes him. He thinks he can put up with your strong-headedness. I was going to say bullheadedness. <laughs> but 
but this young man feels very soft. And well, if he doesn't already, he will have a lot of love for you. And your dad is, how, what word do I want to use? Oh, he's making me itch. Um, your dad has respect for him. He's supporting this. He's giving his blessing. That's what I need to say. He's giving his blessing. I have to figure out what to do besides itch. They're always making me itch. <laughs> I always look like I have full of bugs. <laughs> talking about something special that he used to drink. I don't think it, it might be tea, but I don't think so. It's like a, like a nectar, like a juice, like a, like a something. He liked the taste of it. It makes me feel like it's kind of healthy. It was kind of healthy for him. Ask him something. Hang on. He had a certain smell about him towards the end. I don't know if, the, if it's the lotion that somebody was putting on him or something, but it it wasn't a hospital type smell. It was. But it was something, something on him, something that smelled sweet and fresh. You're going to smell that every so often. You'll get a whiff of that. That's another sign from him. Acknowledge it. Tell him that you realize that's from him. I love you. going to be whispering in your ear. And he showed me the right ear. So sometimes when they do that, it, you may not hear the words, but you might hear pss, 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 pss. or it could sound or it could sound like um it could sound like a mosquito buzzing in your ear. It could make your ear very hot. It could make it could make you itch like me, like around that area. Or you could feel a little wisp of air. Kind of a little blast of air. I don't know if you're gonna be able to understand the words. He goes to your bedroom at night and he trying to see if you're already asleep or almost asleep. I think you're you're already asleep. And he actually tucks you in. He pushes the covers covers in around you, kinda kinda tucks them in all the way up and down you kind of. So if you wake up and you think, Did I did I dream somebody doing that? No. That's dad doing that. He likes to stop in at night after you go to sleep and make sure that you're safe and you're warm. He 
He says, no more tears for me. I'm in a better place. Sweet dreams. And I hear, I heard him say, I'll take the high road, you take the low road. I don't know what that means. Hopefully you do. I hope my neighbor's lawnmower isn't overriding me because that would really upset me. I hate to shut the door, it's pretty nice. So I hope they're not too loud out there. He says you have a lot of his personality as far as the softness, but he says you're a lot stronger and a lot louder than him. And I love you more than you could possibly know. And he's, he's showing me, ah, it's a, I'm not too smart on these type of types of flowers. It's a lily. It's like those surprise lilies that pop up in your yard. It's that kind of a big, kind of Easter type lily, only it's, it's purple. It's got kind of purple and darker purple stripes in the, in the petals. When you see these because I think purple would be a little unusual like I said I don't know that much about lilies um, that would be another sign from him too but he's offering and it's a big it's a big lily it's big and he's offering this to you right now with all of his love he says He says, I want you to know that I'm warm now. You wonder if I'm warm, if I'm finally warm. <clears throat> okay, um, he's not saying anything. Hang on. He says, I know it's not time yet, but I want you to know when the time comes, I will be dancing at your wedding. You have a special necklace in remembrance of him. He's acknowledging that he knows that. Whether it's something he gave you or something you got later, he knows that. I've just got this over, overwhelming, overwhelming feeling of how much he loves you. Just it just like overcame me, and I don't know how to describe that to you. You'll be he'll be able to do that to you. You may not feel it the way I feel it, but I don't. It's just like an overwhelming bubble of love 
I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know how to describe how you're going to feel that. Hopefully you'll know when he does that. He says he can hear you, he can see you. So talk away. Talk, talk, talk away. So he's up dancing, he's kicking his feet. He wants you to know that he can do all that stuff now. And he's so happy we got to spend a few minutes together. So that he got to express some of his thoughts. He got to express some of his thoughts to you, his feelings to you. Because he says he hears and feels yours. So he's, he's up dancing, kicking his feet, and he's doing it as he's leaving. And then he shows the sun really, really big. And up ahead of him. And he says, you were my sunshine. You were the bright spot of my life. And don't you ever forget it. And he said that very strongly. Don't you ever forget it. And with that, he's gone. So, I hope some of it resonated with you. Um, send me a little feedback if you can. I'd love to hear if it resonated with you. Um, much love to you. And I hope it helped bring you a little peace and healing. That's my whole purpose. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, and oracle card advisor. And much love to you. Hugs and kisses.